there is some kind of small red ball sitting on your cervix hi guys welcome back to my channel so in today's video i am going to be talking about something that i never really expected that i would really be talking about on my youtube channel it's very different to a lot of the things that i talk about on my channel but i really felt that i needed to share this experience with you guys but yeah before i actually get into what i want to talk about and share with you in today's video let's talk about my hair <laughs> let's talk about my hair guys loving this slick back curly ponytail situation that i've got going on right now this is actually a new wig that i got from icy hair they sent me this cute 14 inches water wave curly wig it's not a full lace wig so the lace doesn't go all the way around it's literally from here to here you know when you have days where you want to wear your wig but you just can't be bothered to like glue the entire lace around your head and you kind of just maybe glue the top bit here and go i feel like a wig like this is perfect for those kind of days and you don't have to have like the sides of your lace frontal just flapping in the wind because there's no lace there you can literally just fling your wig on glue the top part because that's the only part that's got lace on it anyway and you're good to go absolutely loving the convenience of a wig like this and you can also give your edges a bit of a break from all the lace gluing down and stuff all i really did when i got the wig was bleach the lace i didn't need to pluck it or anything the wig itself is 180 density and it's super super thick super super bushy super super curly i know a lot of people like to wear curly hair in the summer but i kind of like having short curly hair in the winter it kind of like helps to insulate your whole head perfect for autumn winter to just keep your head insulated from the cold and the breeze and i actually like the fact that i can slick it back into a ponytail like this put my little scrunchie in there afro puff just bobbling at the back of my head there <laughs> it's so cute like i absolutely love it it's kind of giving me that all natural but elegant kind of vibe you know who said natural hair can't be elegant girl let me tell you look at this how elegant is this cute little ponytail with the puff at the back you know what i'm saying if you like more of a natural look and you want to go for more of a natural vibe then i definitely would recommend this wig i sprayed some water in it added some mousse added some gloss serum into it as well to give it a bit of a shine i combed it out trimmed it a little bit and yeah the curls came out really really nice all the details of this wig will be in the description box and shout out to icy hair for sending me this beautiful wig totally totally loving it let's get into this video guys <sighs> okay so back in september i got a few text messages from my local gp if you guys are not from the uk a gp is a general practitioner which is basically like a community doctor on the nhs there are doctors that people in the general public can go and see for all manners of health related stuff there's also private ones as well that you can pay for so i was getting text messages for my local gp clinic that i I was due to have a smear test or I was overdue to have a smear test so I booked a smear test the day that I was meant to go I was actually gonna cancel I think it was because I knew I was running late and I wanted to go to the gym and I wanted to also go and do something or run an errand and I was like I'm not gonna have time to fit in a smear test as well so I kind of wanted to like cancel the smear test and not come in at all and book it for a different day but when I called my GP the lady that I spoke to wasn't trying to give me another day to come in she was like should i change the time so that i could still come in on that day and i'm actually so glad that she did that in hindsight because obviously leaving it even later I went in, I sat down in reception and I didn't really feel any type of way about it because from when I've had a smear test before, which is probably when I was about 27 years old, I'm now 35. You're meant to actually have your smear test every three years. For me, going in now at 35, I was way overdue for my smear test. The smear test that I did when I was about 27 years old, I remember it feeling uncomfortable, but it wasn't like too painful. It was just kind of like an uncomfortable feeling so 
I sat there in reception waiting to be seen by a nurse. It was so funny because as I was sitting there, I saw this African auntie come out of one of the rooms and she was my nurse. She had a very strong African accent and she was like, are you Amina? <laughs> And I was like, yeah, and she was like, okay, we are going to go in now. I was like, okay. So I went in, a very weird interaction happened between me and this African auntie nurse that I had. She basically asked me when was my last period. I couldn't remember, like I'm not the kind of person that keeps up with like certain dates of my period. I just know that my period comes maybe the second or third week of the month. I couldn't remember the exact date of the first day of my last period. I felt like she was telling me off. <laughs> she was probably like saying, so what do you expect me to do? I don't, you don't know the date me too i don't know the date what should i write you cannot do this without giving me the date otherwise if i do it and they send it they will send it back and say we don't have the date so you need to give me the date auntie <laughs> I don't know the date like I actually don't know the date it was going back and forth and then she basically alluded that I should just make up a date like just give me a date any date okay I know that my period is like the second week of the month so I just gave her like the 14th and she's like eh hey you see even if you don't know the exact date just give me a date so you can do it don't give me any date I don't care I don't care so I was like oh okay so this is what you've been trying to tell me all along that just give me a date because you need to get this done she must have thought that I was so annoying because then after we got over the whole period date thing and I finally gave her a date so she can do her job I then asked her if I could go to the toilet the way she looked at me when I asked to go to the toilet yeah god this African auntie <laughs> she's like oh yeah quick 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 go 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 so I went to the toilet came back oh yeah get on the bed take off your bottoms and spread them legs those of you who have had a smear test before you know the procedure you know that they you know they stick a clamp up there they have a look inside some liquids come out of your fanny okay they boil it up and they send it off to be tested it did feel more uncomfortable than i last remembered and it was a bit more painful as well than i last remembered but what was really strange is when she was you know digging around up there collecting the fluids that she needed i noticed that she started making this very ah sound effect she was like ah huh? mm, mm, mm. she was actually like making sound effects as she was doing what she was doing and I was thinking why is she making these sound effects and they were like sound effects of someone that is like shocked or perplexed about what they're seeing and I was thinking what's going auntie is everything okay like wh what's going on and I was like lying there thinking girl what's going on are you gonna tell me what's going on why am I still lying here like what else is happening and she's like there's something I'm seeing something there I don't know what it is but I need to go and get a doctor to come and look at it okay stay there don't move, I'm coming back. And I was like, okay. She left the room. I was literally lying there, legs spread out, thinking what the hell is going on? Why does she need to go and call a doctor to come and have a look at something? Like, what, what is the something? What have you seen? What's going on? Like, is anyone going to tell me what's happening? Like, I don't understand. After a few minutes, the doctor just comes in and she was like, my colleague has told me that she's seen something and I'm just here to have a look. And I was like, cool the more the merrier bring everybody to come and have a look in fact bring the whole clinic to come and have a look because i don't understand what's going on so she has a look and then she's like oh mm-hmm Mm -hmm. so she's now making sound effects you two you're making sound effects as you're looking okay so what is going on for real for real because someone just explained to me what you're seeing she turns to me and then she asks me do you have any sexual partners and I was like, uh, no, none at all. Like, I don't have sex. Like, no. And then she was like, okay, okay. She paused and then she basically goes to me, what my colleague and I have seen is that there is some kind of small red ball sitting on your cervix. And we don't know what it is. So what we're going to do is I'm going to tell my colleague to refer you for an urgent appointment with the gynecologist at the local hospital. What? I, what? I, like I couldn't 
process what she was saying to me practically in shock about what I was hearing what do you mean a red ball on my cervix that like, what are you talking about what is going on wait this is this is this, this is a lot this is a lot right now and then she was like try not to worry yourself too much about it we don't know what it is and we just need a gynecologist to have a look so that we can rule out anything like cancer when she said that C word it felt like my heart dropped into my stomach and then she left the African auntie nurse went on her computer to go and do what she needed to do in terms of doing the referral to the gynecologist. Didn't say a word to me. I didn't say a word to her. I got off the bed, put my bottoms back on and I left. <sighs> The walk from the clinic to my car, it felt like I was walking in slow motion. I felt numb. As soon as I got into my car, I burst into tears. I was just so scared and overwhelmed. I just started crying and praying and saying, God, like, what is going on? Please, God, what is happening? Lord, please don't let this be cancer. Lord, please. I eventually managed to start the car and drive out of the clinic car park and make my way home that drive home i was literally thinking about the worst case scenario of what could happen to me from here on forward i was thinking to myself am i really going to enter a season of my life where i have to deal with cancer i was also like just thinking about all the times that i've had these cold calls of people wanting to sell me life insurance oh my gosh like why didn't i listen to these people that kept on telling me to get life insurance now i might actually need life insurance have i done enough for natanya have i guided her in Enough? like is she gonna be able to continue with her life without me being around like how is she gonna cope with this how is she gonna deal with this I couldn't not think about those thoughts as someone who's a Christian and someone who has faith in God you know you would think that my immediate thing is like no I rebuke this this is not gonna be my portion everything's gonna be fine whatever this is is gonna get sorted out but literally in that moment I was kind of already preparing myself for the worst case scenario accepting that if this is what god has in store for me as part of the plan and the journey and the purpose of my life then so be it i got home i walked into my house and i literally broke down again i was shaking and then i kind of got to a point where something inside of me was kind of like okay mina like just get yourself together like pull yourself together just calm down so i stopped crying i washed my face i had a deadline of some content that i needed to do for a brand as i remembered that i needed to do this content i put makeup on and i got dressed and focused on getting this content done as I was actually finishing off my makeup, Natanya had got home from school. Whenever Natanya comes home from school, we'll just like catch up and gist and talk about whatever it is that we want to talk about. As she was talking, I was thinking to myself, do I want to tell her or should I just keep it to myself and wait until I get this gynecologist appointment and I know more about what's happening? She knew that I was going in for my smear test because I'd, I'd mentioned it to her. So I didn't know whether or not I wanted to tell her what had transpired. But but because it was so overwhelming and as much as I wanted to just get on with the day, do the content that I needed to do and just not say anything, I, I couldn't. I couldn't not say something I just had to tell her the way that Natanya reacted in me telling her was very comforting to me in a way that I didn't expect and it kind of reassured me that you know what if anything does happen to me I know that she's gonna be okay I literally got dressed got ready we left the house and I went to go and do my content the next day I kind of just woke up in autopilot got up did what i normally do i went to the gym and i think it was on my way back from the gym i got a text message from patricia the text that patricia sent me was just you know just a simple text that she normally would send just to check up on me and she basically just said oh hey amina how are you hope you're good i wanted to like text back yeah 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 i'm good like that's usually like the normal response or the usual response that i would give to a question like that but as i read that text message like the first thing that came to my mind is like no like I'm not good like 
I'm not good. So I texted her back and I basically just said, I'm fine, but I just received some news that's quite worrying. And she was like, call me. So I basically called her, told her everything that had happened. I kind of didn't want to really tell anyone. Wasn't planning on telling anyone at all. None of my family members definitely wasn't trying to tell my mum because my mum would literally worry so much. For some reason, receiving that text message from Patricia, I kind of just felt that okay I actually want to tell her I want to tell someone I want to tell someone other than Natanya I need to speak to an adult I need to speak to someone else about this situation and actually share how I'm feeling and I also felt that Patricia she's a Christian as well and I felt like in me telling her I can at least have someone else that I can ask to pray for me and to pray over the situation as well. Everything she said to me was really encouraging and helped me to kind of put things into perspective and to not worry so much. She wasn't really too keen on the fact that I had to wait two weeks to get this gynecologist appointment and encouraged me to look into maybe seeing a private gynecologist, which is something that I hadn't even thought about. I was like ready to wait two weeks until I got this appointment. I kind of wanted to see the gynecologist ASAP and at the same time I didn't want to see the gynecologist ASAP. I didn't want to know what the gynecologist was going to diagnose just yet you know. I didn't feel like I was ready. There was a part of me that just didn't want to know like I didn't want to know I wanted to be oblivious to what this could be in case it is something serious. I kind of just didn't feel like I was ready for that news just yet. Maybe within those two weeks, I might get to a point where I'm actually ready to face whatever this is going to be and actually be mentally ready and emotionally ready to accept whatever the outcome of this gynecologist appointment was going to be. And that actually might sound really irresponsible because if it is something serious, I've actually purposely delayed treatment that I could get because I just didn't want to find out the news but I couldn't help how I felt in that moment like I just didn't feel like I was ready to deal with this head on just yet. I think a week went by and in that week I was just not myself at all. I didn't feel like putting on makeup, I didn't feel like doing anything. There was a part of me that wanted to kind of like get my house in order, cleared out my entire wardrobe. I wanted to get rid of a whole bunch of stuff that I didn't want anymore. I felt like if anything was to happen to me I don't want someone else to have to deal with this stuff. I eventually got a phone call from my local hospital. I needed to have a COVID test in order for me to go in for my gynecologist appointment. I think it was the Thursday I had to go into the hospital have a COVID test done and then my actual gynecologist appointment was going to be the following Monday. Thank God I didn't have COVID and then on Monday I went in for my gynecologist appointment. During the week that I was waiting for this gynecologist appointment I had actually already received the results back from my smear test and it had come back negative for HPV human papilloma virus and the human papilloma virus is a very common group of viruses some types can cause genital warts or cancer that virus is what smear tests basically look for thank god I was negative for this virus I was relieved that okay great my smear test has come back negative negative they haven't found anything in my smear test I just need to know what's happening with this ball that's on my cervix the lady from the hospital that had called me about the gynecologist appointment had told me that I would be coming in to have a hysteroscopy and that is basically when they stick a camera up your fanny so that's basically what the gynecologist was going to do at this appointment I came in there was a few other women sitting in the waiting room it was nerve-wracking like it was so nerve-wracking the gynecologist sticks the clamp and the camera up my fanny and she's basically talking me through what she's seeing. She says to me that yes there's definitely a small red ball or lump on my cervix and what she's gonna do is she's gonna try and take it off. I was like uh what now? As in now? Like in this very moment in time you want to try and remove this thing now? And she was like yes I'm gonna go in I'm gonna see if I can take it out and I was like 
okay so i'm lying there got one nurse on the other end with the gynecologist got another nurse next to me telling me to breathe and comforting me and i'm just like oh my gosh as the gynecologist was trying to remove this ball i could kind of feel like a pulling sensation but it wasn't painful as such i feel like the clamp being in there was more painful than what she was doing it took her like maybe a couple of minutes and then she was like yeah i got it i got it as she's taking it out she basically says to me that to her it looks like a cyst and she actually asked me oh do you want to see it like i've got it out we've got it and i was like uh, i don't know i don't think i want to see it i don't want to see it in hindsight i actually do want to see it now <laughs> like i want to see what this thing looks like what is this red ball that's been sitting on my service for god knows how long in that moment i was like no i don't want to see it i don't want to look at it i looked over to the nurse that was holding the tub and i could kind of see part of it like at the bottom of the tub i could see like a ball thing at the bottom of the tub i couldn't see it fully but I could kind of like see like a little round thing just floating around in this liquid inside this tub I don't know what else the gynecologist needed to do but as she was like having a look at my cervix and stuff she basically explained to me that the look and the shape and the condition that the cyst is in doesn't look like something that she personally would be worried about and that she feels fairly confident that it's nothing cancerous and she also mentioned that in her removing it I didn't bleed that much there wasn't a lot of blood and to her that's a good sign just you know the condition of the cyst itself doesn't send any like alarm bells as she was saying this stuff to me i kind of felt like a huge sense of relief oh my gosh like thank god after the procedure was done they kind of give you like a period pad because after removing the cyst there could be some signs of bleeding or spotting afterwards and i don't even know what she used to remove the cyst like i didn't see the instruments that she used to remove it the gynecologist then explained to me that i'm actually the youngest person that she has seen in her clinic like ever or in a very long time and i thought that that was quite interesting she then went on to explain to me that a lot of women do experience things like this a lot of women do get cysts i feel quite confident that you're gonna be fine you're gonna be okay she would still need to have the cyst sent off to be tested just to be a hundred percent sure that there's nothing cancerous going on and that it's completely benign and that if there's any issues or any changes or anything like that that i would be informed her and the two nurses in the room just kept on reassuring me and saying to me that amina you're gonna be fine don't worry don't stress yourself out about it i was just like oh my gosh like thank you so so much like honestly i was just like so grateful i left the hospital feeling so relieved and so tired at the same time i've been carrying around this weight of this situation and this experience not really knowing what was going to happen to me not really knowing what was going on mentally preparing myself and accepting the worst that could ever happen and i've been carrying carrying this around not being able to really talk to anyone about it and just keeping it to myself and the two people that I shared it with which is my daughter and Patricia now that this weight is finally lifted and then realizing that right like I was really carrying a lot literally felt tired <laughs> I got home Natalia had already come home from school and I basically explained everything that had happened she was so happy she was so relieved we were both just so thankful to God like I could have been like so many other women who have left gynecology appointments like that with news that is like devastating and just completely life-changing and I can only imagine how terrifying that can be it really brought to my attention how important it is for us as women to be very aware of our health and our bodies our bodies go through so much it is really important that we take the time to do our checkups do our smear tests go to our gps ask to be seen and if it means going private and if you can afford it doing that i actually recently saw a tweet of a young lady who had five cysts removed from her stomach and i think she may have actually done a youtube video on it which i think is really really important to have other women sharing their experiences and just raising awareness about these type of issues amongst women and she was also a black woman since i had the cyst removed i actually ended up booking a holiday to greece you guys may have already seen the greece vlog and mentioned in that greece vlog that i really really needed that holiday spontaneous as hell but it was so neat just 
have some time away to reflect and recoup on everything that I had been going through. Whew, yeah, it was a lot. Probably the most scariest thing I've ever experienced in my entire life and I'm someone that has been homeless. One day I'm gonna tell that story but I'm also someone that got pregnant at 17 and had a baby at 18 years old not having a clue in the world how to be a mum and that was scary but this whole experience I would say is up there as literally the most scariest thing I've actually had to go through and I didn't want to just go through it and just not talk about it at all because I feel like in me sharing my experience it may be of help to anyone that might watch this video come across this video and it may benefit them in some way shape or form make sure that you go and get your smear test make sure you stay on top of your appointments for your smear test every three years and make sure that you are aware of your body aware of your health and just really taking our health more seriously i know we talk a lot about mental health and things like that i think also being very aware of our physical health is important as well both inside and out so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful i'm sure that there's plenty of websites you can go to for more information definitely check out the nhs website if you haven't had your smear test in the last three years make sure that you make an appointment as soon as possible and get that done for anyone that is experiencing cancer at this moment in time i pray that god will keep you i pray that god will strengthen you i hope you can find the sense of peace and i hope that you can still experience joy and laughter despite everything that you are experiencing god bless you and i'm praying for you thank you guys so much for watching this video and i will catch you in the next one bye